We've been talking from Galatians chapter 5, and I want to read the scripture here, Galatians chapter 5. In fact, why don't you stand with me for the reading of the word, uh, and we're going to read the scripture, the theme scripture from the Passion. We're using the Passion translation uh, for this, and uh, so if we can put it up, there we go. Ready? But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you. Somebody say within me. Within you is divine love in all its varied expressions, joy that overflows, peace that subdues. Today we're talking about peace that subdues. Amen. All right. Patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Never set the law above these qualities, for they are meant to be you know, Pastor Marlena, she said, if we're going to start preaching on this, we're going to be tested in this. And so how many, how many know what I'm talking about? Where you start, God wants to start moving on you, and, you, and then your patience all of a sudden gets tried. Oh, come on now. And your gentleness, it's like, you know, you forget you're gentle, amen, or meek. or And, and, and so in this time, know what the enemy might be after. He might try to just steal the fruit of the Spirit from your life, but he can't have it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. Speak. We are open. We want to hear your word today in Jesus' name. And somebody said, amen. amen. Be seated. I'm going to read the theme verse for this time, I'm reading from Judges chapter uh, 6 and uh, verse, let me read a few verses, in fact, uh, and, then, and then we'll go from there. But it says in Judges chapter 6, how many have ever heard the story of Gideon? And... Uh, uh, I'm going to explain some things to you that I feel in the spirit, but it says in verse 11, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abrazite, while, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press. Somebody say the right thing in the wrong place at the right time. He's in the wrong place. He's doing the right thing. He's in the right time, but he's in the wrong place. This is wild. In order to hide it from the Midianites, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And then I want to look at verses 13 and 14 and then, and then hop into a little further in the Scripture. It says, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, Somebody say, with us. Sounds like something Moses would say. We're not going to go anywhere unless you go with us. That's the doctrine of heaven. We were talking about this yesterday uh, with some of the men, or, uh, and also on Friday night as well with, with some of the young adults. The doctrine of heaven is with him. And we know in John 15 that the doctrine of hell is without him. Jesus said, without me you can do Nothing. And so what is hell? Hell is without him. So then what is heaven? Heaven is with him. And so here he is. He's bringing down a little bit of heaven. Let heaven come down. Come on, somebody. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let heaven come down. So if the Lord is with us, and somebody's never asked God this question, why? Nobody's ever asked God why. Why then has all this happened to us? Anyone ever asked God a question like that? And where are, has anyone ever asked a where question to God? Where are all his miracles? Can somebody say that? All his, all his what? He says, where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? We heard about it in another generation saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Watch verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? And then it says in verse 22, Now Gideon perceived that he was, uh, he was the angel of the Lord. He was talking to Jesus. 
So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace. Somebody say peace. Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. I need to speak this to somebody in this room. I'm going to say it again. Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Let me say it again. Peace be with you. Do not. Somebody's going to take this word. Do not fear. You shall not die. And then it says here, and, and, and it, um, verse 24, sorry. So Gideon built the altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. Jehovah Shalom, Yahweh Shalom. He called that place Yahweh Shalom. To this day, it is still in Ophrah of the Abrazites. What a word. We've been talking about the nine. We're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is singular. It is one fruit with many ingredients. And so it's not the fruits of the Holy Spirit. It is the fruit. Of the Holy Spirit. And so it's amazing how when the Holy Spirit works in your life, and somebody knows what I'm talking about, how you might be in a certain season and he works some love into your life. And then you're in a moment where you experience a lot of pain and suffering and God says, I'm going to cause joy to be released into your life. And like we said earlier, maybe some people get on your last nerve and God has to work some patience in your life. And it's amazing how the Holy Spirit will work different things into our life as a part of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But these are nine ingredients. If you're baking a cake or baking some cookies, you have to have different types of ingredients. And if you don't have all of the ingredients, then it's not going to turn out the way it's supposed to turn out. And so here we have in this, in this concept with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we need all of the ingredients of the Holy Spirit working into our lives. And so we have this, this graph here that we've been using uh, about the nine, and, and it's about the, the upward, the outward, and the inward. And these ingredients do different things. And so love, joy, and peace, they're about loving the Lord your God. These are upward. There's something God's connecting us with Him, with love, joy, and peace. And then some stuff is outward, and this is when we start dealing with others, and there's patience and kindness and goodness. You love the Lord your God, and then you love your neighbor. And then as yourself, it's inward, and we're talking about faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How many are enjoying this series? And so today we're talking about peace, peace. The peace of God. In the Greek, the word peace is Irene. It's E-I-R-E-N-E for those who are taking notes. Irene. In the Hebrew, peace is shalom. The word shalom. How many have ever heard the word shalom? Jehovah shalom. That's what we're talking about today. Nothing missing, nothing broken. The absence of everything that is harmful. The presence of everything that is good. And like James says, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no changing. He changes not. There's no variableness to him. He's not fickle. God is not a man that he should lie. And God is not also fickle. He already somebody's going to catch this, sits on the throne and he sees the end from the beginning and he already knows what he wants to accomplish in our lives. It is us who sometimes, and I'm not talking about anyone particularly in this service, maybe the second service, but, but there's some of us we can get in the way of what God wants to do with, 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 with these ingredients in reverse. Where we're not flowing in the Holy Spirit, and so we get a little, a little bit angry once in a while. There's again, that's a second service crowd. This is this is the good crowd, and 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 sometimes we we, we you know we, we we let things come rise up inside of us, different things from the flesh, the works of the flesh, rise up inside of us, and it it, it comes to it's not the devil, by the way. The works of the flesh are not the devil. See, sometimes that sometimes. I mean, poor Lucy, Lucifer. 
He gets a lot more credit for things that we blame him for. That's just the devil. No, that's you. I'm just, I'm just looking around. See, I'm, I, I see a bunch of holy people here. But, and, and sometimes the devil gets so much credit. Not that the demon did that. No, the devil did not make you do that. Your lust, your flesh, your, that, that your, your desires did that. And somehow we can get it because God's seated on the throne. And he is unchanging. And he is not fickle. He doesn't just, just wake up on Monday morning and say, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and flick you. I'm just going to go ahead and, 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 and hurt you. God's not into that business. He is, he's, he's a God who is holy, he's righteous, and he's a God who changes not. And he knows the plans, Jeremiah 29, 11, and the thoughts that he has towards you. This is, this is a good idea that God has for you. He has good thoughts that are towards you. He has good concepts about your life. And so it's not for evil. It's for good. Come on now. Some of you got to hear this once again. God is not out to get you. He's not the big guy upstairs who's just waiting for you to mess up so he can squash you like a bug. That's not God. Can we just talk some, 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 some theological basics here? Because this is important. God sits on the throne. And he wants you to succeed. He wants you to move in shalom. Somebody say shalom. You know, shalom is very, very important. Um, when I was, I have a picture. I think they might have it. When I was in high school, excuse the ridiculously good looks, but I was 17 right here. This is my senior picture, and, you know, I felt like I needed to dress up for the day, and I played basketball back then, and you could kind of see... The, the, the smile there, a little mischievous, uh, you know, got plans, got thoughts, got ideas. But I had the opportunity in the yearbook to write a quote or whatever I wanted. And for some reason, this quote just, just stuck with me ever since this time. And you've probably heard it before. And it was K N O. Jesus, no Jesus, K-N-O-W, peace, K-N-O-W, Jesus, K-N-O-W, peace, and then N-O, Jesus, and N-O, peace. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. I don't know why I put that in my, in, in my yearbook, but there's something about knowing Jesus that gives you peace beyond your understanding. It surpasses anything that we could know or do in our lives and, and, and what, how we can even go on Google. Some people you need to, to, to not go on Google. Google's a dangerous thing. Have you ever had like a, a pain in your back or a pain in your neck and you start Googling it and all of a sudden you have stage four cancer? And you have, you have nine days to live. And you're just sitting here Googling. Re I rebuke Google in Jesus' name. Get the Google out of here. I cast you Google out in the name of Jesus. But, 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 but we need, whose report will you believe? We'll believe the report of the Lord. And so we'll just, if you've got a pain, we're just going to just pray that God just heals you in Jesus' name. And you all, you came in sick, but you're going out healed. Woo, come on, somebody. And so, and so, so this whole idea, no Jesus, no peace. This is deep stuff. And because and, 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 peace is important. I've learned that when I married my, my wonderful wife. Um, one thing I learned early on, because, you know, I was, I was about 24 when we got married. And, you know, I was a little bit set in my ways. You know, you, a man starts getting into their 20s. Can we just have some honest talk here? Is this okay? 
And you kind of get set in your ways, and you have your patterns and your flows, and the older we get, the more we're set in our ways. Can all the men say amen? And we like things the way we like them, and we do things the way we do them. And the ladies are elbowing men in the ribs right now. And, 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 and some of our ways can be Neanderthal. Cavemanish. And and so I married this lady, and one of her, you know, she has different love languages, you know, gift giving. She loves to give gifts. And then her other one is acts of service. Like, I'm the opposite ones. I'm like, you know, physical touch and, and words, you know, using your words. And so she is this whole thing of acts of service. And sometimes still to this day, her acts of service, she wants to help people and, you know, just take care of things. And sometimes I'm just like, girl, I'm tired. And, uh, and then, you know, and then she, I, I told you before, I'd be a millionaire, but she loves gift giving. And uh, if I just had all those gifts back, I'd be a millionaire. But um, I'm just playing. But one of the things that I found about my wife is early on was she likes everything clean. And not that I didn't like things clean, but my my room would be more like a nest. Um, I'm going to get to Gideon in a second, but it would be, you know, I'm a pile person. And you have things in the pile. These are the clothes that I need to get to the laundry. These clothes, well, I wore them before, but maybe I could wear them again. And these are the clothes that came from the laundry that are clean, but they haven't been hung up or put in the drawer. Um... See, some of you in the military, you, they, that, they, they, they beat that out of you. I didn't get into the military, but I do have a woman that beat that out of me. But um, <clears throat> she likes things clean, and, 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 and I didn't get it. It didn't make sense to me. But then this revelation eventually came to me that she only rests when everything is clean and in order and put in its place. And she would not rest. And sometimes I'm like, come on, let's sit down and watch a movie. And she's in there doing the dishes. And, and, and she's vacuuming. And I'm sitting here, can we just watch a movie? And, 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 and it hit me one day that she will not rest. We can't. We can't do nothing. <clears throat> Maybe one in the morning. I'm like, I'm going to sleep. And she's... I'm like, turn, and we had, I don't know what we had. We just had a cheap vacuum because that thing was loud. And, but I learned this. Shalom. Somebody say shalom. That shalom would come quicker to my home if I started to help her. A light turned on. Because she would come, and, and I would sit there and say, well, you know, let's, after she was done, I'm like, because I, I was really good at just watching <laughs> and waiting. And then finally she would finish up, and then we'd sit, sit on the couch to watch a movie, and whew, that girl can fall asleep quick, like 20 seconds quick, anywhere, anytime, just, whew, just like her mother. And... And, 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 and so I got a revelation that if I helped her, then that would save time, and then we could sit and watch a movie. You know what I'm saying? And so there's something about shalom, and, and I'm just trying to, I'm trying to help some of the brothers out, because if you want to bring some peace to your house, then, 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 then help with the dishes. Is this, is this a deep revelation? Here's the preacher's point. Number one, help with the dishes. Number two, vacuum the carpets. Come on, somebody. Number three, take out the garbage. There's a re when revelation comes, this is just practical stuff, but when revelation, that revelation comes on you, all of a sudden your wife's not so tired. Who? come on, somebody. And, 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 and the party is no longer pooped. 
Can somebody say peace? Say, let's pray right here. Let's have, a, let's have an altar call. <clears throat> we're going to have an altar call for those who are willing, and then those who are not, we're going to have a deliverance line over here. <clears throat> I won't come out. I won't help. Somebody say peace. When Peace is when stuff is put in its proper place. Peace is about order. God is a God of order. And there's order. When there's order, there's peace. My dad used to say this all the time. He used to say, peace isn't the absence of a storm around you. It's the absence of a storm within you. Do you realize that in recorded history, only 8% of history, since they started recording history, only 8% of history in the entire world, there was peace? Only 286 years of history. In the 3,100 years of re what they call recorded history, there has been there's been peace for only 286. And during the, that, that 3,000 plus years, the 8,000 treaties have been broken. The world is not a place of peace. You just turn on the news right now, and it's not a place of peace. I already told you at the beginning of the year that we will not participate with the spirit of division that is assigned to 2024. And so for the next 18, 19, whatever days we have until this election, we will not participate with the spirit of division that is in the land. Amen? Is there amen in this room? And so, and so I'm not, you know, I think you need to pray. I think you, you, you know, if the Lord leads you to vote, then vote. But, 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 but we will not participate because everything is dividing. There's a div divisive spirit that's trying to tear up this country right now. And, and, and many of you served and laid your lives, put your lives on the line for this country. And we're not going to have it. We're not going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about Gideon. But we're not going to have it. We're not going to allow the enemy to take this nation. God still has a redemptive pur purpose for the United States of America and so there ain't no red, there ain't no blue, there ain't no Democrat, there ain't no Republican that's going to rip this country apart. If my people who are called by my name, come on somebody, there's a certain point where it's like, who are you? Who are you? And so when we get to, to, to Judges chapter 6, we have this interesting narrative because there's this enemy. Can somebody say enemy? And the enemy's name is the Midianites. And the Midianites, the name Midian, and I'll get into this more in the second service. I'll, get, I'll finish the story. I'm going to start it here. But the name Midian means stress, quarrel, division. Am I talking to somebody here? It, 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 is, it is a name that, that when you look at it, it speaks of this fight, this enemy who is out to stress you out. And it's amazing, I, last week I shared with you that the warfare that you're going through is an indication of the assignment that God has for your life. Because the enemy does not want somebody in this room to step into your assignment. And so if he can distract you, if he can get you full of fear, if he can get you into a place of anxiety where your heart is overwhelmed and you're spending too much time, oh, this is too much, with the world and focused on the world that we're not missing, we're missing our time with God, then you're going to have a lack of peace. And so here's what happened in Gideon's story. In the, the Midianites came and they began to steal the harvest. And that's one of the things I have an announcement for in this house today is the harvest thieves, they have to go in Jesus' name. Do you realize there's been harvest thieves that have tried to come up into your field and steal your joy, steal your peace, steal your resources, steal your family, steal your relationships, steal your finance. You know what I'm talking about. You plant seed and you're waiting for a harvest. And when the harvest comes up, the harvest thieves come. 
and they steal what is yours, what is rightfully yours. And I just have to, and I don't have to say this forcefully, I'm just going to say this with authority, that every thief that has tried to steal from you has to return back to you seven times what he has taken. And so I put my foot down in the spirit and I say, enough of the harvest thieves that have tried to come up into your life. And so in this story, here's Gideon. And he, and I want you to hear this because there's two things that are going to happen here. He, number one, he and all of Israel adjusted themselves to their enemy. (laughs) This is good stuff. They adjusted their lifestyles. They adjusted their work. They adjusted their relationships to their enemy. What was happening? The enemy was dominating them. See, there's a certain point, come on now, where we can no longer let the enemy dominate our marriage, our children, our body, come on now, our health, our finances. Again, what did I say? Enough is enough. But what had happened was, was Israel and Gideon is just a snapshot. Just one man is just a snapshot of the entire nation. You look at him and he's a picture of what everyone else was doing. Because when their harvest would come, they would be doing the right thing at the right time, threshing wheat in harvest time in the wrong place. They were supposed to be in the threshing floor, but he adjusted his activity according to the enemy. Come on now. There's a lot of Christians. We adjust we adjust our lives to what the enemy is doing rather on what God is doing. And so he adjusted his life and he was doing the right thing at the right time in the wrong place. Woo. And he's threshing wheat in the wine press. The wine press is not the most effective place to thresh wheat. Threshing wheat was to be done in a high place. And in the high place, there was a wind that would blow the shaft off of the grains of the seed. But if you go into the wine press, you don't have that same level of wind. Fire and wind. Come and do it again. Whew. There's a certain point where you're doing something in the wrong place and you're just trying to get the job done, but the job is not effective as it could be because he's adjusted himself. See, some of us, we haven't been able to see the fruitfulness of our activity and our ministry because we have, we've adjusted somehow to the enemy. And so this is when, and I want you to hear this announcement, this is when the angel of the Lord shows up. <laughs> because he says, you know what? Things have to change. And so God says, hmm, let me see in all of Israel... Who should I go to? No, they're too strong. No, they're too mighty. No, they're too edumacated. They know too much. They're too knowledgeable. They have it all figured out. Ah, there's a guy. He's the weakest in his family. And his family is the least in all of their tribe. That's what I'm looking for. I choose the foolish things, the base things, the things that are not, the things that are despised to bring down. Ooh, somebody's catching this. And so he says, his name is Gideon. Dude doesn't even know what his name means. Gideon means mighty. Ha! Ah! He doesn't even, he does not, he has not stepped into his own. He doesn't even recognize what I've already given him. 
See, one of the things I said, I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again. We're in a season in the earth where God is causing his church to come into a revelation of what we have been given in him. In the Holy Spirit, we've been given blessing, we've been given authority, we've been given power. Oh, somebody's going to catch this here. We've been given love and joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. There's something powerful. God wants us to know what we've been given in Him so we can hit the mark in what He's called us to do. Can somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. This guy doesn't even know what his name means. And so the angel of the Lord shows up to the weakest, to the least, to the unlikely, to the one who's off the radar. He arrives to a son of the tribe of Manasseh. Manasseh means I will forget my toil. I will forget my hardship. God brings you into a place of blessing. Come on now. Into a place of revelation where you forget your hardship. You're not even looking back at yesterday and everything that you went through. That was just a stepping stone into what God has given you. You're now walking in health and in strength and in life. What used to try and tear you down, that's not even part of you. When you tell your testimony, it's as if you're telling someone else's testimony because the sting has been taken out of it. I'll forget my toil. I'll forget my hardship. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? I got an attitude. Yeah. Yeah. That's good for you to share your testimony. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But I'm, it's, it's, it's like as far as the east is from the west, he's removed this from me. And so here's the angel of the Lord showing up to Gideon. And he says, yo, Gideon. I'm sorry. Hey, Gideon. <laughs> you are a mighty man of valor. I'm telling you what your name means. And Gideon, and this is what we read in verse 13, and maybe I'll just get to verse 13 and a little bit of 14 here, and I'll have to do the rest in the second service because I believe God is breathing on something right now. I can feel it in my spirit. In verse 13, Gideon starts asking the questions. Because God's just sitting here trying to identify him. You're mighty. You are powerful. You are a warrior. In fact, you're not just a warrior. You're more than a conqueror. And I've made you mighty. I'm calling you out of your limitations that have been placed upon you by your family by your tribe, and by your enemy. Oh, that's a whole other subject right there. By your family, by your tribe, and by... When God delivers us, He delivers, He saves to the uttermost. And when He delivers us, He delivers you out of the limitations of your family, woo, of your tribe, and of your enemy. Ooh, that's a three-point sermon right there. That just, that, that, that'll preach right there. Maybe I'll get into that more in the second service and see what the Holy Spirit has because that's on the cuff. That's on the fly right now. The limitations of your family. Every generational tendency. I don't have time to get into this. And your tribe, your people's the limitations that the enemy's tried to put on you is coming off. And then every limitation the enemy tries to put on you, and he begins to lie about you, Joshua the high priest, and say, the accuser points the finger in Zechariah chapter 3 and says, look at him, he's not worthy, his, 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 his garments are dirty. And, and the Lord says, I rebuke you, Satan. You look in Zechariah chapter 3, he says, I rebuke you, Satan, Ha. And he says, put on a new turban, put on new robes, and make him righteous once again. The accuser, the enemy wants to limit you. But here's Gideon. And the Lord's trying to call him out. And that's when it's amazing how you step into a good moment and the questions start coming to the surface. 
It's not a complete moment, but God has begun a good work. And so all of a sudden you're like, God, why has this happened to us? Why are we going through this right now? This doesn't make no sense. If you're supposed to be with us, you're our God. We come to church, to Karis Church, every single Sunday. We tithe, we come to prayer, we come to conference. (laughs) We even come on Wednesday nights. We're pressing in. Where are the miracles? What a question. Where, you know, I've heard stories of what you did for Moses and the children of Israel, how you took them out of Egypt. I heard stories of how you opened up the Red Sea and allowed them to go over on dry ground and then closed the, the, the sea on top of them. God, I heard stories of, of what you did for Joshua huh, when they crossed over into the promised land. We've heard stories of what happened at Jericho, how they went around the city walls and on the seventh day the walls came down. We heard stories. I've heard of miracles of what you did. Has anyone ever felt like this before? Of what you did in previous generations. I've heard stories of how you're doing miracles over in Africa. I heard stories of people getting raised from the dead in China. And he's sitting there going, What about us? And what about right here? And what about right now? It is legitimate to have questions. There's a difference between asking questions and questioning. Whoo, that's a whole other subject. I need a whiteboard for that one. But there's there's a certain point where he asked the question, God, have you ever prayed this prayer? You just got down and you're just like, it's, 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 it's sincere, but it's also clear. Dear Heavenly Father, I beseech you. What's up? In the name of Jesus, amen. In fact, I can't even get into all the platitudes. I can't even get into all the intros and outros. God, what's up? Has anyone ever prayed like that before? Here's Gideon. He's got like, this is basically just, what's up? This is his prayer right here. And I love this. And I want you to catch this, 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 this concept because in verse 14, and I want you to hear the words, then the Lord turned to him. And said, go in this thy might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of Midianites. Have I not sent you? But I want you to hear this. (laughs) Then the Lord turned to him. Um, Pastor Alexander Gideon, come up here, please. You're right here, okay? Threshing wheat in the wine press, okay? And the angel of the Lord, just keep threshing, comes and says, you are mighty. He's looking like he's doing a dance. Is that the Carlton right there? Is that the, is that, yeah. And the angel of the Lord says, you are mighty. And Gideon says, well, then what's up? Where are all the miracles? I've heard of your stories. I've heard of your fame. I've heard of everything that you've done, but where are the miracles? Keep, keep rushing. And verse 14, as he asked this question, it says, and the Lord turned directly to him. And at this moment, here's what the Lord was doing. He was adjusting Gideon away from his focus on the enemy Because he had adjusted himself and his actions towards what the enemy was doing. And God got in his face and was adjusting him and got his attention. You read that in the Greek, in the Hebrew, it's amazing. It says, and the Lord faced him directly. The Lord turned to him. I want you to catch this here. The position changed. And when God's position changed, the conversation changed. 
And Gideon started get moving into a whole nother realm of revelation where he was like, well, now they're talking face to face because he says there, I've seen God face to face. I've had an encounter face to face. And in this moment, he all of a sudden gets his attention and he goes into his heart and Gideon opens up his heart. and He says, I am the least while well, I'm breaking that off of you. Have I not sent you? I'm breaking every limitation off of you. Let's thank Pastor Alex again for his acting skills. <laughs> Woo, and watch this. The Lord faces him directly. And they get through the conversation. I want you to catch this. And something hits. Well, verse 22 through 24 hits him. And he realizes, this is not a regular person that I'm talking to. I'm not even talking to an angel. This is the angel of the Lord. Do you know what the angel of the Lord is in the Old Testament? Who is it? Jesus. It's what we call a Christophany or a theophany. It's an Old Testament appearance of Jesus. And he gets this revelation. He says, I've seen him face to face. You see, here's what God's doing in this moment. I want you to hear this because peace is about to be released. He's turning himself directly towards you. Woo! I want you to catch this here. God is turning directly towards you. God, if I could say it to somebody who knows what I'm talking about, is getting in your face with his face so you can face the fact that he is on your side. And here is Gideon in this moment, and he says, I seen him face to face. And he adjusts himself away from focusing on the enemy, and he adjusts himself to this revelation of who God is. He says, I have now come to a place called Jehovah Shalom. A place of wholeness. A place, come on now, of completeness. A place of peace. You see, we're in a moment where the Holy Spirit wants to put a peace inside of us. A peace that the world doesn't give and the world can't take away. Gideon gets this revelation and everything changes. And he is now the first fruits. What does the scripture say in verse 34? Who the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he blew the trumpet. There's a certain point, come on now, where you get this revelation of who he is and the spirit of the Lord comes down upon you. Come rest on us. Come rest on us on us. The Spirit of the Lord rested upon him, and he began to blow the prophetic sound, a sound that he began to blow over himself in this moment, and as he blew that sound over himself, he was mo now going to move in his prophetic destiny because the trumpet in scripture speaks of the prophetic. The blowing of the trumpet is like the prophetic word. And so he begins to move in his prophetic destiny because the spirit of the Lord had come down upon him for he had met Jehovah Shalom. Put your hands out today because Jehovah Shalom is coming into your life. How many like this story? This is a good story. This is just the beginning of the story. I'm going to have to do the second half in the next service because there's some things that God wants to do in this house. And even right now, I speak peace to your storms. I speak peace to your family. I speak peace to your children right now. I speak peace to your body in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that we are recipients of your power and we are recipients of your peace. And so let the peace of God come down upon us and sanctify us wholly. May our spirit, soul, and body be preserved, sound, and blameless until the coming of the Lord. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, 21, 22, 23. That whole narrative, you, it's, it's coming upon you, the peace of God. And so even as our hands are raised, I thank you for peace. 
peace woo, that passes our understanding be released in this house in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say I believe it? Can somebody say I receive it?